welcome to a new shopcast from the woolly thistle it's great to be back with you on this saturday morning i hope you're doing well and you're enjoying your weekend uh this is episode i think 128 and we'll put the number there uh any correction go with the number here because i'm rubbish at this i don't remember what numbers we're on and i think we're only um we're only a few into this and I can't seem to get my head around it, but that's okay. So I hope you're doing well and having a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing. I hope there's lots of knitting. I have lots to show you and chit chat about, so I think we should just get started. So thank you so much for watching and please do join our email list, which you can do right on thewoollythistle.com, which has two O's and two L's. Remember the two L's, I think it matters uh, for getting to the right place. And um, follow us on Instagram. We now have a Facebook group that we have been um, getting more and more people in. It's, it's incredible. I haven't been overly active on Facebook, but I think a lot of you are there. And so I want to meet you there too. So join our Facebook group if that's your thing. And of course we're on Ravelry and uh, we have all the threads going. Um, I'll talk more about our sweater cal coming up. Uh, that's coming close and, um, and all the good stuff there as well. So what am I wearing today? Well, I'm wearing a vanilla sweater. This is in color 4125. And I'm just loving that the temperatures are cooling down enough because I'm a little tired of being overheated because I want to wear wool and the morning starts out nice and cold, but then it gets really warm during the day um, and then I suffer. So um, suffering for my, my art. But anyway, um, the weather is getting cooler, which is really, really nice. So yes, I'm enjoying this. It's good to have it on again. It's like an old friend coming out of my big woolly chest. Um, oh God, about 25 years ago when Jay and I bought our first house, we um, we bought this big coffee table, but it was actually a big chest uh, with cedar inside. And we used it as a coffee table in our living room. And of course, when we moved, it got moved around. And when I got really into my knitting again, it became my sweater chest. And I wonder, do you guys have a sweater chest or a special, a protective place for over the summer to keep the moths out and stuff um, for your yarn and or your finished objects. Tell me in the comments, I'd love to know. So let's talk about the winner. I always like to announce the winner up front so that nobody's hanging on tenter hooks. which did you know that that's actually a term from, um, I think it's probably in the preparation of weaving or, or of fulling a woven finished object. Did you know that? The tenter hooks. Um, you'll see it on the selvage edge of something that's been woven. And I think what they used to do is they would hang it up and strip, you know, fill it and stretch it. Um, and these were the tenter hooks. So when you're hanging on a tenter hook waiting to hear something, that's where it's from. And that's what I love about knitting and fiber and textiles is there is so much history uh, woven into what we get to do every day. And so that really gives you a connection, a thread of connection, if you will. <laughs> I love that. That really, really always excites me. And um, so if you have any good stories like that, I would love to hear them too. I love reading comments and um, and I try to re reply to as many as I can. I certainly give you all love hearts when, when I've read you because the comments are always so good on our podcast. So keep the conversation going. And if you have any good tidbits about... Um, you know, terminology or just stories from a textile background that we use without knowing. Chickens are the same thing. There's so many um, sort of cliches that come from, you know, don't count your eggs before they're hatched, you know, all those, the pecking order. There's so many good chicken um, little uh, sayings that we have for, for right across our lives that come from the coop. And I think textiles are the same, you know? So let me know what, let me know your favorite one and uh, maybe I'll, I'll share it here um, as the winner. That's what we're going to do for next time. We will have a winner from uh, the comments that you leave about, um, you know, just sort of a cliche or a saying or just a, yeah, a saying of some sort that relates back to either chickens. That might be too easy. Relates back to textiles. That's the one I would really love to hear from you. Um, that'll be fun reading for everyone too. So 
that's what we're going to do for next time and we'll do another surprise giveaway um, but now I'm going to announce who won this surprise giveaway and we had loads of comments so thank you keep that up our winner this time is Melissa Friedrich and she says love your pretty whip socks love the lace pattern and that that yarn looks amazing for socks the sock yarn is going on the top of my wish list along with Exmoor sock yarn I knit socks in a size zero usually, and they seem to last longer for me. Love the knitted chicken, and I'm excited to see it on your needles. So Melissa, thank you for your comment, and you are the winner. So send us an email with uh, to info at thewoollythistle.com. Put winner all in caps in the subject line, and we will be sure to get this out to you. We're going to need your address for this one. You have won. Let me find it. So first of all, you've won a Wooly Thistle tote bag. We get asked all the time if we will sell these and for now we are just giving them away as prizes or as part of a kit um, but you know maybe we will sell them because I know that that you do would like would like us to do that so we'll, we're working on it and um, so you're getting Melissa two balls of this lovely Rowan felted tweed uh, which is a DK it's sort of a light DK and it's got alpaca in it this is yarn I stocked for quite a long time here at the Woolly Thistle and it's on the chopping block because um, I'm not sure that you guys want to um, buy this at the Woolly Thistle. <laughs> so I've taken it off the shelves, but I love this yarn. I knitted a sweater in it um, by Marie Wallen. Uh, Marie Wallen's uh, books, quite a lot of them use Rowan Felted Tweed from before when she, um, before she had her own yarn. So if you feel I'm doing an injustice to Rowan Felted Tweed, then let us know in the comments too, because if you want me to stock it and I hear from you and, and that you will, you will buy it, then of course I'll stock it. It's a British breeds yarn, or it's a British yarn. Rowan is a British company, but they're huge. They're very big and they have operations all over the world. But Melissa, you're winning two balls of this lovely, lovely stuff. I really enjoy this yarn. And you're also getting um, the enamel pin from the Woolly Thistle. And we're throwing this in here. Oops. Just two little mini bits and bobs. This is a Plotolope, which you know I'm a huge fan of. And I don't know, Melissa, if you knit with this, but if you haven't, you can test drive it. Um, people are so afraid to knit with this because it's unspun. To me, that's just exciting. And yes, look, it just breaks. But you know what you do when you break it? It's easier than pie. You just put one layer on top of the other. If you feel like it, you can give it a spit and a, and a twist, but you don't even have to. And then you're knitting again. And if you hold it close enough, so that the staples are within your fingers. That is strong, right? Giving you a good look at my nails too. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so when you go like that really close together so that all the staples are between your fingers, that is strong, that's not going anywhere, but it's unspun. And I think that freaks people out that they're gonna break it and oh my goodness, but if you break it, you just join it back up again. So that's that. Anyway, quick lesson there about Plotolope. So you're, you're getting these two little what do we call them? Bits and bobs? Bit and bob. So this will be going out to you as soon as we hear from you with your address. Melissa, thanks so much for watching and leaving a comment. All right, so let's get moving on. So we've talked about what the um, prompt is for next time. You're going to tell me what uh, sayings you know about um, from the textile world, um, which can include so many different things. Um, put them in the comments and you'll all be in the running for the prize, which we'll do as a surprise again. So let's talk about um, current FOs. Um, I didn't have one last time, but I do have one this time, although they're not really quite presentable yet. But I have a pair of St. Mary Mead socks, which is a design by this handmade life, who is Olivia. She's a love, she really is lovely. And I knitted these, I did um, steal the heel from Hey Brown Berry's um, before and after socks because I just really enjoyed doing that heel and it's nice. 
And of course, I knitted this in 100% wool Gamel Seri by Rauma. We have this in the shop and if it's sold out, we, we are getting more. Uh, so just leave a little um, click the notify me tab, put your email in and we'll send you an email as soon as that's back in. But I think by the time you're seeing this, it'll be in the shop. Love this color. It's so pretty, isn't it? Yeah, and so I'm gonna enjoy these socks. Um, I actually did quite a few modifications on this, which I did mention before. First of all, they're knitted on US zeros. So like Melissa, I, I went down to US zero and I wanted to show you, I haven't blocked these yet. I just finished them last night. Um, but you can see just kind of the bulletproof of that stretched. Oh. And yeah, I think that's gonna be really good. Of course, with um, I knitted these toe, toe up, so I didn't do a heel flap and gusset. So it's um, there's no yarn traveling behind as you would with um, you know, heel flap and gusset. You would do knit one purl one, and you, or what would you do? You'd, you'd knit one. Oh God, what do you do? You you kind of carry the thread over the stitch in between. You know what I mean, right? Um, but I think this is going to be fine. I'm going to enjoy testing these and seeing how they survive the other thing i did was once i got the heel done and i was doing the little anklet which is a nice length because you're done faster is i went up to a us one just to make that a little bit more wide for my cankles and um so i don't cut off my circulation because i have tiny feet not so tiny rest of me so yes and i think <laughs> US one, maybe US one and a half, forgot the plot. So they're, they're fraternal. This one looks quite a bit looser. I think, but yeah, really enjoyed this pattern. Um, I did modify it, like I say. Um, for me, I had to go down to size zero just to get it to be narrow enough. It was quite a bit wider on the needles called for and the number of repeats. But that's just the joy of gauge and what you're knitting at. So I cut off the two ends of the repeat and just made it three solid uh, repeats. Went down a needle size, which is good because 100% wool, you know, I think you want this to be pretty tight and uh, thick, if you like, so that it's going to last. So I will report back on how these do. I'm looking forward to wearing them they're going to be warm because they're all wool woolly wool yeah that reminds me i was just thinking of woolly wool there um last night the what was that because i'm recording this on saturday the 19th so on the 18th of september um the can retreat opened and can is the Creative Advocacy Network, which is hosted by Hey Brown Berry and Anne Choi. Both of those girls are on Instagram with, with those names. And they were doing their inaugural retreat for business uh, owners and people who want to be in business, who are designers or um, maybe shop owners, or, you know, they just, they have, um, they have a desire to get into the knitting industry. Um, on a professional level uh, and this is targeted uh, for knitters and designers and business people of color. So I was lucky enough to be one of their guests last night and it was really really fun. It was uh, remote of course so I was able to do it from home and I was on with Sylvia who is at With Cherries on Top 2 and Jimenez Joseph, who is Jimmy Knits. Both of those are wonderful designers. Uh, go check out their Ravelry pages. Um, yeah, so it was really lovely to be um, involved with this endeavor. And I hope that there'll be many more retreats of that sort because I think it's a really positive thing. And it was really great to, um, to meet these lovely people. And I didn't know it, but Sylvia of With Cherries on Top, you might have recognized her sweater called the Nubian Queen. I see it on Instagram all the time. I actually saw her wearing it at Edinburgh Yarn Fest one year. This is a very iconic sweater full of color work uh, of a Nubian queen. She's beautiful. Uh, well, Sylvia actually is Scottish and uh, grew up in Aberdeen. 
such a small world, such a small world. So I really enjoyed that. And thank you for letting me um, participate in that. I loved it. It was really, really fun. The, the time was over before I knew it. Anyway, I digress. This is what I do. So let's get back on track here. So latest whips. Um, right. So I am making good progress with my Hansel hat. I'm knitting this from a cone of Jameson and Smith two ply in color 27. And for those of you who watch um, episodes of the Wooly Thistle will know that I've changed up the color a little bit. I think last time I showed it to you, it went 27, 54, and then the cream, which is actually 202, 202, yeah. And so this part here was a solid creamy beige color. And I always had plans to use this, look, ah, same color, same, same yarn. Um, but so, and I was going on and on about not being a perfectionist in my knitting. Um, but it turns out I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I will tolerate some stuff, but not apparently just a horrible hap pickup around the body of the hap. So I ripped it all back and back to the square of the, or the diamond of the body and I picked up properly and got going. And in doing that, I was really enjoying this combination here. I haven't taken a picture of this in black and white and I probably should to see if there is true or enough contrast, but there's, I don't care. There's something about this lovely, gentle, um, undulating, contrast that is gentle and lovely that I went with. And then for the pop of color, we went back to this, uh, but the pattern has this part, you're doing uh, individual lines of colors. So that's what we did. I always had plans to bring in this. Oh my gosh, this together, right? So here we are building our own capsule wardrobe. <laughs> Unintentionally, but maybe subconsciously, huh? Um, I'm using up scraps. I'm definitely using up um, what's left of things and I'm a happy camper. So we got that all done. And now um, one of my favorite things to do on a hat is to work on the border. It takes forever in a day, it's slow going, but um, only because there's so much to go around. I'm doing the full handsel, but each row is super fast and I'm loving it. So let me get this oriented properly for you. And here we go. So I'm working on there the lace edging. It's called an applied border where you start knitting perpendicular. So I knit all of the hap this way and now I'm putting the border on knitting rows this way. It's meditative. You get one of these done, you know, fairly quickly really. You've got to manage the whole hap though and not keep twisting it around the same way. I think I talked about this with sleeves. I'll twist it this way to knit back and then I go back this way. And then you just do that and that way the thing sits in your lap and doesn't get twisted and twisted. I think our, or at least my tendency was always to keep going round and round in this. Oh my God, oh my God. Mm. Oh boy, dropped stitch. But you know what, that's so far back. So you know what I'm going to do? Nobody will ever know. See, this is where I'm not a perfectionist is I will be able to catch that stitch and tack it down with a needle and thread or a needle and the yarn. Oh boy, but I need to mark this so I don't, don't um, so I don't lose it and forget about it because life is busy and you forget about these things. So we're just gonna do that right now. I'm taking a piece of um, that Rama ball that I had and because I don't have any stitch markers handy. There we go. I'll show you what I've done. So I've cut that stitch. It's not going anywhere. I just tied a piece of thread around it and I can find that nice and easy and I'll fix that tonight. Um, so I'll continue on. Uh, so here is a corner. This is the corner of the hap you can see. And the applied um, edging is really clever because by the time you get to these corner stitches, you're finishing 
a point and you're starting the next one. So there's no interruption, there's nothing special to do at the corners for this, you just keep going. And uh, maybe I'll find another disaster, who knows. Um, knitting disasters though, there's so many real disasters happening in the world right now. A knitting disaster is not to be cried over, it's to be learned from and is to find your own ingenuity and how to fix it and make things work better. Right, so all that to say, I'm almost finished my hap and um, I'm very excited for it to be finished because, let's just do a wee, let's see, a little, this is hard to do because I don't want it falling off my needle and I've got a cone attached. But yeah, you know, this is going to be really nice together really lovely. I'm going to enjoy this and I'm going to um, block the living daylights out of it to make it nice and big. Um, so I don't actually have blocking wires. I've gotten this far without them, but I think I'm going to invest in them for, for this because there are so many points and I've knit this on a nice big fat needle. So there's lots of stretch in there to be had. And hopefully next episode, I'll be showing you this as a finished object. So this is the Hansel Hap. It's the full hap by Hudrun Johnson, who is a Shetlander who lives in the US. Um, and she, you'll know who Gudrun is. She's very famous um, and she's a lovely person. And I've, this is my second hap of hers that I've knitted, the second Hansel Hap. The pattern also comes with, um, a half pattern design too so that you could just knit half of it like a regular uh, triangular shawl and that would be a nice way to go but you know in for a penny in for a pound that's me right so there's that the next thing I have on the needles that I've been playing with and enjoying immensely Fancy Hen by Ella Austin this is available on Ravelry and I saw um I know, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. If you watch, let me know because you inspired me to knit this. On Instagram, I saw her finished fancy hen and she mentioned that she had used a bag of Goya beans for the, the weight in the bottom. And I just, that tickled me no end because that's a good use for those beans now. And, uh, and, I, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do the same. So I've got started and here she is. So you start at the bottom and there's a little bit of shaping on the uh, corners, as it were. You make corners, sort of, increases. And then once you've got the right number of stitches, you begin knitting the color work. And I'm starting on that central motif now. I'm sort of a third of the way up here. So I've got all this to go and then there'll be all that. But here she is, she's lovely, isn't she? Nice little hen. Um, and so I'm knitting this with Rama Strickgarn. The pattern's written for Baram Yu uh, in DK weight. So I don't have that, but I do have Rama Fennelgarn. And so my contrast color is this one, which I think I knitted my other vanilla sweater in. That's leftovers. So this is probably, I think it's 405. So that's my contrast. And my main body is actually being knitted right off of here. <laughs> I might have shown you this a long time ago. I love this. It's a pie shawl that I started at Squam uh, a couple of years ago with um, by Annie Claire was teaching a pie class. So this is a pie shawl. So this is lovely. I, I'm really wondering whether I should be ripping this out now that I see it. I felt like it was too big and heavy. It could be a baby blanket. Um, but I don't know. So I'm just sort of uh, knitting from it because it's been sitting in my basket and I, I've not been feeling that I'm going to ever use it. Although I really quite like it. It's just very heavy and you'd have to wear it double, wouldn't you? Because of the shape. I know I could turn it into a baby blanket, <clears throat> maybe square off the ends. Maybe that's what I should do. God, I just want to wear it. It's 
like a mandala, isn't it? You know, knitting it in this gives it a really nice structural quality, I think. It's got a lot of dimension and texture. All right, I don't know now. I don't need to do this. It's not like I don't have yarn. But there's me being Scottish, right? That's me trying to be frugal. But it might be a bad idea. Right, okay, I think I've made a decision that I can't be, I can't be doing that. There's too much beauty, I think, in this. So I've got to figure out how to finish it off. But look, I mean, this is what the beauty of Wooly Wools is, at least one of the beautiful things about it. This has been sat without a needle in it for a long time because I stole the needle out of it a long time ago to do something else. <clears throat> and I'm knitting right off of it. And those stitches and all that lace work is going nowhere. It's totally holding its own. That's one of the reasons I love Wooly Roll. It's good to us. All right, <clears throat> so those are my um, two FOs and no, one FO and two whips right now. So that's what I'm knitting on. Thoroughly enjoying my knitting. I'm very much looking forward to getting home at night and um, it's getting darker earlier, you know, by seven o'clock, I think we're closing up the chickens now because uh, we close them in every night and I think we're at seven o'clock. So it's getting dark by then. Okay, um, so let me quickly show you what's on my nails. This is our newest, one of our newest colors from TaylorMade Nail Polish. And we have these made for the Lily Thistle. And this is what I'm wearing. It's called Yarn Snob, <laughs> which is great. I don't think that's, yeah, that's good. And then this one is called Frogget, which is a lovely greeny, bluey green. I'm calling this collection green, but I don't know, it's a little ambiguous. And then this one here is Castonitis. My daughter's wearing this one right now. Yeah, so really pretty. Uh, they go on nice and smooth. I do put a top coat on just so things last. And there we go. So these are the latest colors. So now we've got the flagship colors, which are purples. We've got pinks and reds, and now these lovely, lovely greens. I think it goes quite well with this. Right, so yes, get yours. These all make great stocking stuffers. Uh, we're getting to the point of time where we're gonna have to think about that. And um, so these will be awesome for that. So the vanilla sweater montage, video montage is coming along. We've had quite a few entries now, which is brilliant. If you want to join in, it's not too late. Just uh, send us a clip of your video of you wearing your woolly uh, vanilla sweater and send it to info at thewoollythistle.com and we'll get that in there. So we're working on that. There's not gonna be too much longer left uh, for you to get your entry in. So do get it in if you want to be included. I think it's gonna be really fun. So I hope that if you've got kids that went back to school, everything's going okay. I've been, this has been top of my mind for quite a while. Both my children, uh, one started high school, one started sixth grade. Both of them are doing 100% remote learning and it's going really well so far. Um, my daughter's high school is 50% remote all the time. So they have two groups and one group's in school while the other's remote. And then when that group's in school, this one's remote. So she is just being remote both halves of the week. Um, so there's always people remote with her. So, you know, for this situation, which is really rubbish, it's the best it could be. And she seems to be doing really well and, um, and seems to be enjoying uh, her school work, which is great. She's very organized. She set up her desk in her bedroom right in front of the window. So she's got great lighting and um, she is an organized little beaver anyway. So I'm not too worried about her. And then my son who went into sixth grade, his school is 100% back at school, except for those who chose to go remote. And for those kids, we are being funneled into a remote learning um, interweb company that has its own curriculum. 
and we're working on getting that all set up. It's taken a little bit longer to get set up, but um, he also has support from his teachers and paraprofessionals at school. And so he is up and running. He, he's like a wee businessman, getting to his meetings on Zoom on time. He has his homework done. He has his papers ready. He's very organized and I'm very, very proud of him for that because I know it's difficult for young, young boys to be organized and to sit and be on a screen all day that's not something like, you know, Fortnite or, you know, YouTube or whatever. So he's doing great and both my kids are really rocking it. So that is wonderful. My husband is um, home with the kids half the time. So he's working from home um, two days a week and I'm working from home two days a week as well. So I work remotely. We had to actually go to that here in the shop. I don't know if I've mentioned this. Um, the, we're, we're a lot of people here now and for all of us to be here at the same time is not okay in terms of COVID. So we're staggering shifts and I've actually been sent home two days a week for, I've been told I can work from home those days. And so that's what we're doing. And thank goodness for the internet. I can't imagine what this must have been like to um, the people of 1918 during the Spanish flu pandemic because they didn't at least have the internet. We are staying connected. And as much as things are falling apart all around us, we are staying connected. We've got our um, videos and uh, our emails and ways of connecting. And we have um, school online that is all remote. We have work happening. It's phenomenal. We've all had to adapt, but we are adapting. We're in it for the long haul. And when I get really anxious or upset, or just, I do take comfort in that it's happening to all of us. Uh, this pandemic doesn't choose, uh, it doesn't discriminate, let's say. So we're all, we're all having to come around to this new way of living. I think the big hope now is for a vaccine. Um, and, you know, this is not forever. This too shall pass. And when it does pass, we are going to feel so flipping good, aren't we? Yeah, we'll have everybody in the shop. <laughs> we'll be falling over each other. But, um... Oh yeah, it's been hard and it's been six full months of this now, but you know, every day we're a step closer to a vaccine, step closer to being back to a more normal, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you're doing okay. One of the participants of the CAN retreat that I was talking about earlier um, said hello and says that uh, she watches the Holy Thistle podcast and she is a member of our Knitting Buddies program and that that has been really fun for her. And I'm really sorry, I'm blanking on your name. So thank you for, um, for saying hello last night. It was really, really nice to hear from you and to see you and wave. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your first name. I have a feeling it's Elizabeth, but I'm not sure. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so you're a member of our Knitting Buddies program, which is great because we still have that going. Our Knitting Buddy program, we started as soon as COVID started rearing its head. We realized that knitters might feel very isolated. And so we um, set up the Knitting Buddies program where you express your interest. You do it through the Ravelry group that you want to be in a group. And then uh, Maggie, matches you with other people who've also expressed an interest and we set you up and off you go in your group. And this is your little cohort to get through COVID together, to have your knit nights or Zoom chats or emails or just checking in on each other, making sure you're okay. Um, and that you're not out there spinning out on your own, that you at least have this check-in with your knitting buddies. It is what you make it though. So it really is dependent on your own input. But um, I think lots of people are enjoying being in that. So if that's of any interest to you, just hop over to Ravelry. You'll find the thread for Knitting Buddies in there and join up. Right, so what else do I want to tell you about? Oh, um, at the end of this month, uh, the Woolly Thistle will be making a donation to the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which is um, a nonprofit that was set up by Jackie Robinson's wife uh, to help promote or, or to help finance really kids who want to go to college, who want to do post um, 
post bachelor degrees and all that kind of stuff. So basically she is raising money to send kids to school. Education is so important. And so um, we as a group at the Willie Thistle decided that our donation would go to the Jackie Robinson Foundation. And I'm waiting till the end of the month to find out what our takings are and then we'll be um, donating a portion to the Jackie Robinson Foundation. So if you have any interest in knowing more about that, you can go to uh, JackieRobinsonFoundation.org. We'll put it up here so that that's correct and you can read all about it there. It's very important to us at the Willy Thistle that we do have a social conscience component to what we're doing here. And I realize that I'm not gonna please everybody all the time with what we select, but it is a group of us selecting it and it is always going to be a worthy cause. So um, I'm excited to start thinking about uh, who we're going to donate to next um, and, uh, and we'll get going on that fairly soon. But for now, we're just uh, waiting to see what the sales are at the end of the month and then we'll make a donation. So thanks very much for shopping with us because it's uh, because you shop with us that we're able to do this. So thank you for that, appreciate it. And um, it can't do any of it without you. So thanks. I completely forgot to talk about last time, our sweater cowl that is coming up and starting on October 1st. Uh, this is our third annual sweater cowl. All the rules are on Ravelry. We do have some rules around this one because it's a huge event and so we want to keep it um, so that it's fair for everybody. Uh, but it is very inclusive. So if you've never knitted a sweater before, join us. If you've knitted a bajillion sweaters and you can design them in your sleep, join us. We want everybody who wants to knit a sweater um, or who has plans to knit a sweater anyway and would love some company, come join us at our Sweater Cal. We have lots of great designers participating and if you go to our Instagram, you will see that we are highlighting uh, those designers who are participating and the way they participate is very generous. They offer discounts off their patterns and they also offer prizes for the end of the cowl and various points throughout the cowl. The grand prize is always $100 to spend at the Woolly Thistle, so um, it's definitely worth joining in. So you can get all the finer details um, at on our Ravelry group, and I believe, I, I need to check this, so don't quote me on it, but I think the rules are also in our Facebook group as well. But for sure, they're in the Ravelry group, and you will be hearing from us about this um, on the email list too, so you'll have everything you need there. It runs for approximately seven weeks and um, we don't require that you're completely finished by that time. I think it's usually sort of four fifths finished. We'll call that good. Um, but again, all the rules are listed out for you in the Ravelry group, in the thread and the hashtag for it, the sweater cowl is TWT sweater cowl 2020. So if you are in the stages of trying to find a pattern, do check out our uh, designers first because they're offering um, discounts to you and it's really nice to give them our business. Um, but you can knit with you can knit any design you want, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing and talking to folks about what they're planning to knit before it starts because I am still looking for inspiration. Uh, the lead contender right now, as I record this, is Sulala, and I know I'm not saying that right because I'm doing it from memory. But the picture of that here, and um, that is a beautiful uh, sweater, originally designed for a yarn I don't carry, but I've seen it knitted in tuku fingering. And it's a lovely, bold, high contrast um, colorwork sweater, just two colors though. And the colorwork is around the body, not the yoke. So it changes that up. I'm really quite liking the idea of that. So um, <laughs> I can see gray on dark gray or light gray on dark gray or dark gray on light gray, because I love a gray. Love a gray. Uh, so anyway, I'm thinking that that might be what I knit, but I'm definitely going to be looking through um, all the options and um, hopefully spend a lovely evening doing that very soon, maybe over the weekend, because I need to get my ducks in a row. But I hope you join us and you can knit anything you want, um, so long as it's a sweater with sleeves and an adult size. Uh, we do allow full color work vests, so by definition, they don't have sleeves. Um, because of all the color work in that, we count them. Um, and there's some great, great 
vests out there. We've got the seaweed sweater, which I don't know that we'll have all the colours in, in time for the cow. MJ Mucklestone has a beautiful DK colourwork vest called Bimentry, and I'm getting the colours in for that. But I don't know if they'll be in in time. But you know, you can start late too. You don't have to start right on the date, though that is fun. Look at this. Are we going into the shop update part? I think we are. So let's just keep moving on, shall we? I want to show you these. People have been waiting a long, long time for this. This is Blacker Lioness in four ply and DK. We got our colors in. And I want to show you them one by one simply because the colors have changed here and there in varying degrees. So I wanted to show you the new, the, the color names are the same, but they are actually looking quite different. Probably the biggest change is in the tourmaline, tourmaline, which used to be a very peachy color or coral color, more on the, the um, color of my socks that I just finished. This is much more pinky now, very gentle pink. I really like it. Uh, so this is tourmaline and blacker is in Cornwall, England, down on the very bottom of the coast. Beautiful scenery there. If you've ever watched Doc Martin, which is a crazy um, UK show, it's a drama and where there's a very grumpy doctor who ends up living down there. It's so lovely. The scenery there is so lovely. So this is where Blacker's from. And we have this in four ply and DK. The Lioness is a 50-50 linen wool blend. Um, I knitted um, the Calyx sweater by Elizabeth Doherty in this, and you can see pictures of that in my Ravelry. This is a really nice yarn to work with. One of the things I like about this blend is you get the linen drape and coolness, which makes it a nice warm weather knit, but you also get the stretch afforded by the wool. Um, if you were knitting with 100% linen, there'd be no give in it. And that can hurt your hands because there's just no, there's no give. But because this is 50% wool, you do get that stretch, which is easier on your hands when you're knitting. And you still get the drape of the linen and the, um, the better and better, the better and betterment, if you like, of the finished object as you wash and wear it because linen gets better with age. And with this high content of linen in it, your FO does get better and better. So I feel like it's the best of two worlds. I don't often knit with plant-based yarns, but this one I do really like. And uh, here it is in aquamarine. This is what my color, oh, this is what my color um, calyx is knitted in, like the ocean or like the beach, you know, the Caribbean. So this is this, aquamarine. And then we have it here in moonstone, which is a lovely yellowy natural color. I think it is dyed. Now, serpentine is this? No, sorry, this is lapis blue. I don't know if the new lots of this will have changed. We got this in um, the same lot as before. It's lovely, very popular color. And this is emerald, lovely green. And I don't know if it's the linen that just sort of saddens the colors. And that's a, that's a dying term. And it just means turns it down, mutes it, makes it gentle. But these are lovely. And they're just gentle, happy colors, even though you might describe them as saddened. And this here is serpentine, which is a green, but here it is next to the emerald. So it's a bluish green, more blue green. Lovely. And here we have onyx. Great color, great neutral. The rose is so, it's not rose, it's ruby. The ruby is so lovely and gentle. I like this a lot. Lovely. And this is citrine. For a bright color, it's very muted. And did I show you this one? I think I did. This is serpent. Wait, what's this? this oh God. This is serpentine. Ignore what I said. This is serpentine. 
and I'm going to show you sapphire. This is sapphire, which is like a greeny blue. Emerald and sapphire together. So these are the colors that I pulled out for you. I wanted to especially show you tourmaline or tourmaline because it is a pink more than a coral now. Uh, I love it. I think it's beautiful, but it's very different. So unfortunately, if you were waiting to get some of a similar lot as before that I can't do that for you, but um, this is it. Now, um, Working with Blacker is really nice. I like their yarn very, very much. They're a small independent mill. They mill a lot of yarn for other uh, small producers, like Berlin Yarn has her uh, wool spun up there. Uh, they work with a lot of people. So Blacker Yarns, Lioness is great. And of course we just had their birthday yarn, I just remembered. So that came and went last Friday very quickly but I was able to order more and that will be in the shop. At least at time of recording, it should be in the shop. And so if you want to get your hands on that, you can. Um, that this year was a four ply fingering weight and a chunky weight. The chunky was really chunky. I'm not used to having bigger uh, weight yarns in the shop. So that was a nice uh, novelty and would knit up very, very quickly as a hat or a set of gloves or even a garment, very quick. Just beautiful. The colors, um, we'll put a picture here, were very beachy and reminiscent of the Cornwall coast and that's what they went with. Um, that was their that was their inspiration. So thank you if you shopped with us uh, for those colors. It was fun and exciting. I tried to get in more than I've ever had before so that it didn't sell out in a heartbeat, um, but we did sell out. But like I said, there is more. So thank you so much for that. I hope that maybe by now you have that at home and uh, you're enjoying it. It's a beautiful blend of very, um, very lovely yarns, uh, some of which are very rare, like the Norfolk Corn. And I believe if I remember right, that came from a single flock. There was some English Merino in there to give it softness. And that was from a single flock. And it was the last of that flock's wool that went into the Cornish garden from last year. There's also Shetland from small flocks and BFL. I think that was it. A lovely, lovely blend, had a really nice hand on it. Shetland Wool Week here. Uh, we opened pre-orders for that about a week ago at time of recording and we were inundated. We are so excited for the Shetland Wool Week 2020. I think particularly because the event itself is not able to happen this year and so we are pouring our heart and our traveling itchy feet into um, all that we can find from Shetland. And when Shetland Wool Week came out as a pre-order, you guys responded um, and uh, placed your order. So thank you for that. Uh, we are still on pre-order. We're not expecting to get these books in until the end of October, but you know that as soon as they come in, we will turn those orders over as quickly as possible. Also, as always, you're welcome to purchase other items with your book and uh, we'll just ship everything out when the book comes together. So if you want separate orders, that's fine too. Or if you want um, to order other items, but you want them sooner, then you just, um, submit two orders for those things. That's the easiest way to get your other things faster. Uh, otherwise, we'll send everything together um, in October when they arrive here. Very excited for this. I'm also trying to get my hands on the Shetland uh, journal that just came out and I think is starting to be delivered. I ordered one for myself way back in June. I haven't got my copy yet, but um, I know Misa who is um, the the brain behind that project and I'm talking to her about getting some for the shop. So I hope that we will be stocking that, but I don't know for sure just yet. If I can, I will. That should be my that should be my tagline. If I can, I will. <laughs> uh, Pom Pom Quarterly came in and that was on pre-order. This is just beautiful. Knitted in Jameson uh, uh, Spindrift this is, but of course we don't have enough of that yarn in to to offer kits in it right now, I'm afraid. Um, it's very difficult to source Jameson uh, Spindrift, but we do our best and we are waiting for some more to come in. That's gorgeous, look at that. Lovely shawl. I really like that shawl. It's got a cable and texture. Beautiful sweater. Ah, oh, love that. As much as lace will confound me, 
I am getting better at it with practice and with a lot of stitch markers. Here's Ocean Rose, who is the guest editor of this lovely issue number 34. So we have these. What else do we have in the shop? 52 weeks of socks are right here. We got all our pre-orders out and we ordered more in just to have in the shop. So if you've been on the fence, you can still get it. And we also have here all the Lina issues. I think we have all the issues except number five, which is out of print and has been for a long time. John Arbin, we have more coming over, especially Exmoor Sock Yarn. We're getting tops. I know I've been talking about that. They are coming. Um, I'll talk more about them when I can have them and hold them. Um, we have uh, annual number one here in stock and we have number two coming over uh, in that delivery as well. What else do we have by hand? This is the Northern Cal. We've got plenty of those in stock right now. We also have number nine, which is Nova Scotia. And we have number 12, which is London. And number 11, which is New Hampshire and Vermont. Yes. Um, one and only time the Willie Thistle has been interviewed. Right there. Um, okay, and then we have, we probably need to get some more Kate Davies in and we need to get some more Nitsonic Stranded Color work. Um, we do have some Norwegian knitting designs. We'll be getting more of these in because I think we're down to our last one again. And we're down to just a few Selbu mittens, but we'll get more of these in. We sold out of um, medieval knits. I had a feeling about that, so we'll get more of those in. Um, a very interesting book. You know, I think are you like me that you really get excited about the textile and the history and all of that stuff? I feel like I need to get more into that. That's that's an area of uh, reading and uh, podcast listening that, that I could really enjoy. Um, we have a couple of uh, big book of kid nets. I shouldn't sit next to here because now I'm just going on about my books. Winter knits uh, from Scandinavia, very popular last year, lovely book, very pretty. And The Art of Lithuanian Knitting, we got back into. Lovely. <laughs> I need to stop. Socks from around Norway. Look at them. They're not all colorwork socks in here, but a lot of them are. I haven't knit a pair of colorwork socks yet. I think that is on my bucket list. I think because I have, you know, quite wide and I have a very high bridge and high arch and all of that, that I'm afraid that carrying the yarns will make the socks too too tight and I won't get them over my foot. Um, but I'm not a tight floater, so I probably could work around that. Um, and also having those double, uh, sh you know, having the double strands will make them warmer and last longer too. So it's not a bad idea to knit color, uh, color work socks Here's 2018 Shetland Wool Week. We have a few, we have a few of these on the shelf, um, but I do have 2017, 18, 19 coming. So those are coming ahead of the 2020 uh, new ones. So we'll have those in stock. Making Stories, issue four. We have some of those. We still have a couple of issues. Should I get more of these? This golden fleece, I probably should get more. These would make lovely gifts. Talking of gifts, we have a gift list or a wish list that you can use and give to your, your honeys um, so that they know what to buy you uh, in time for the holidays if you are so partaking. So your wish list you can find, it's, there's a tab usually on the right hand side. I'm not sure if this is reversed or not but it'll be on the right hand side of the um, of the screen when you go to the Willy Thistle. Click on it and uh, you don't have to have an account, I believe. Uh, you can have a wish list without having an account. You can share that list, wish list by emailing it to your significant other um, or your parents or whoever that you want um, these things from the Willy Thistle. However, sadly, it does not it doesn't allow us to record quantities. So if you want a sweater's quantity of yarn, you're only gonna be able to put in one. <laughs> I don't know if you can put in, if you need nine of them, I don't know if you can put it in nine times, but um, 
So you have to include instructions to your person that they need to buy a certain number of that color or of that yarn because we can't get it to say nine balls of black or lioness. I've tried. Apparently it can't be done. Nuts. Too bad. But, you know, you only need one book of something or one magazine or what have you. So it is, it is still very useful and it's great that you can share it. Put a note on there that you don't want just one ball of this. You want a sweater's quantity and that would be eight balls or seven balls or ten balls or whatever it is. It's okay to be active in this part of the process of getting your significant others and people to get you exactly what you want for the holidays or your birthday. So use that wish list. It's also a good way for you to keep track of things that you really like um, is your account and you know, it's for you to use as you see fit. Uh, peeking out here is the vanilla sweater cal pattern, which I had made up and we're making kits for the woolly thistle, um, for, for the vanilla sweater. And uh, you get your six balls of yarn, as well as the booklet with the pattern in it and a woolly thistle tote right here. And that's a lovely uh, little kit all together. And um, we, we are putting lots of colors in the kit. If there's a color you want to knit the sweater in and it's not in the kit uh, choice, just send us an email, we'll put it in there for you and then you can finish your purchase with that color. Um, we're just building it as we go, as people tell us what colors they want in there. We do have uh, the 20 colors for sure of those um, heathered, you know, on gray colors because these are so popular, but there's lots of other great colors too. So as you let us know which you want us to make them up in, we are putting them in the shop and then they're there for everybody. So new and coming to the shop. This is so exciting. There's so much good stuff. I am super stoked about MJ Mucklestone's new book. Uh, Lina is publishing this book by Mary Jane. Um, she is a color work diva and the sneaky photos that they've been showing us on Instagram have my heart all a flutter. Uh, so yeah, we are very excited for this book coming from uh, Mary Jane Mucklestone. Uh, keep a watch out for it here at the Woolly Thistle. I'll deal with all the international <laughs> shipping and all of that. Um, and then you can just get it from, from us here without worrying about the international um, expense of shipping over your copy. Um, let us do that for you. I'm happy to do it. And then what else do we have? Oh my goodness, we have West Yorkshire Spinners Holiday Yarn coming. It is uh, here, it should be here by the time I'm recording this. And uh, we will be putting that up on the shop as soon as we get it. And you can get a free pattern from Winnick Mum when you buy your ball of 2020 holiday yarn called Silent Night. It's in lovely dark blues and uh, there's sparkle in it for this for the um, for the night sky which is just oh, lovely and West Yorkshire Spinners this year have put out all their colors from the previous holidays and we have all of them here so if you want to um, get a color from years gone by or if you just prefer a color from before what have you um, they're all here and uh, shove quickly so that you don't get stuck waiting um, if you're knitting these for holiday socks so that everybody can um, go to bed on Christmas Eve wearing the same socks which is super cute um, get your order in sooner than later so that you can get what's in stock and get knitting on them right away so Nordic Knits will be in the shop soon. Uh, that's due in the end of October. We currently have a waiting list with lots and lots of people very interested in it. So I will be putting in my order and opening pre-orders right around the time this uh, podcast goes live. It's very reasonably priced. It's a hardback book and it's gonna be around $25, which is fantastic. I'm glad to bring that to you for a good price. Um, so yes, if you're interested in that, you will want to head over to the shop right now and order your pre-order. And for all of you that were on the wait list, you should have received an email letting you know exactly when that opened up so you know and you get your order in and we'll get those the end of October as well. So Shell and Wool Week and Nordic Knits will be coming in at the end of October. It will be bedlam here, but we love it. It's fun and we have a very good system down now. We've done this many times now and we're really good at getting your pre-orders out and 
organized on time. So that's our promise. Friend Japani should be here. And if it's not here yet, it'll be right around the corner. We've got a nice big order coming with lots and lots uh, of all the colors. Um, so that's coming. So hopefully, um, hopefully that's in actually by the time you're seeing this. I showed you Black or Lioness, that's in. And um, what else do we have? Floatal Lopi and Lopi, we are updating our supplies of that as quickly as possible and as often as possible. Um, the Alfida yarn sets just sell so quickly, um, which is lovely. I love that so many of you are knitting with Floatal Lopi. Well done, keep it up. And uh, I'll be looking for a new pattern soon to knit a sweater with Plutolopia again, I really enjoy it. And it's great for color work. And the finished object though, even though it's, it's such an interesting um, experience to knit with unspun wool and it's really enjoyable, it's the wearing of the finished object that really is the amazing thing. You have this super warm item that you can wear in really cold weather, but it's as light as a feather. Also, you can knit with two or even three strands of this together and knit yourself a coat you can you know that is done you can totally do that so you can experiment doubling up and knitting together um so there's you know that's the wonderful thing about knitting it really really is is that the opportunities and the variations are endless and really there there are very few rules um and if there are rules they're there to be tested and broken and explored and you know find new fabrics find new um find new ways of doing things, create new stitches even. Um, I mean, that's really how the vanilla sweater came into being is that I wanted to knit a very, very plain sweater that I could wear a lot and that I would want to wear that was just, um, you know, everyday wear really. And I wanted to knit it in Rama, which is a fingering white yarn. And I wanted to knit it quickly, which meant I went up a needle size <laughs> or three or four. And what resulted was a really nice drapey fabric that the vanilla sweater has. And that's how it came to be. So, you know, um, if you at all are adventurous or curious, there are, there are no limits to what you can do with your knitting. And I think part of it is um, being able to swatch and have patience with swatching or just casting something on and being okay with ripping it back when it doesn't work out. But that's how you explore, really. And um, it's fascinating, endlessly fascinating to me what we can do. Tuku was just replenished, so we should have plenty of um, the fingering and the sock. I think the fingering weight colors are all in. There are still some um, in sock that we can't get because they're out of stock. Um, but uh, we'll get them in as soon as we can and we keep replenishing that too. I think I mentioned shortly, just a moment ago, that Jameson Spindrift is coming in soon and hopefully it could be in by the time you're watching this. And with that, I hope to be able to release all of Marie Wallen's yarn sets from Meadow and Shetland, those two books. So I'm hoping that we have them. We do have to wait quite a bit for them. It's just the nature of the beast, I'm afraid. But as soon as they're here, we will get them uh, up in the shop and we'll let you know don't hang around. It'll be a long time again before we get more. So if you want to be ready. Yeah, what, what I mean by that is have decided, don't swither and dither. Just, you know, know that you want to order it and try and get in there. Uh, we are also for the first time going to have some of their DK weight yarn and that will be for the Vimentry um, sleeveless vest that you can find on Ravelry is designed by Mary Jane Mucklestone and it's a beautiful, lovely uh, color work vest, no sleeves, and it's in DK. So that should knit up in a flash. And if you haven't knitted color work before, I think this would be a good one to start on. Um, and because it's a vest in DK, it shouldn't take you too long either, you know? So hopefully that takes some of the butterflies away from you knitting an all over color work garment you would be able to feel very proud of this finished object too so I'm hoping that'll be in soon and I've also gotten in enough yarn for some sets of um, the Peary Leaves design which is by Donna Smith and it's in Shetland Wool Week 2020 so I wanted to put together some kits for that and I got um, the yarn that that calls for so that'll be in at some point as well 
Jemison and Smith, two ply jumper weight, my favorite desert island yarn is in good supply. There are a few colors that are out of stock and we can't get for now because of COVID, though I'm noticing some that were out of stock before are now coming in. So it's sort of cycling through a few colors. It's not many, um, but let us know if you are looking for a color that we don't have and we'll let you know if we can get it or not. But we are trying to keep up with, um, with that right there because it's so gorgeous and so we are ordering lots and lots of that so we have plenty of it in stock for you and we'll have more katie's kits in both jameson and smith and jameson's um although i'm not at all sure when we'll have the jameson's in i already talked about these so just quickly because they're new in the shop um, are the lovely nail polishes from Taylor Made, made exclusively for the Woolly Thistle, Cast On Itis, The Frog Pond, and Yarn Snob is what I'm wearing. I just love them. Uh, and so do you. And thank you for shopping and buying these. And like I said, they're great for stocking stuffers or just a little treat for yourself. And it is nice to do your nails. So yeah, I think I've rambled on quite a bit this time. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me and that you've gotten a fair few rows knitted on your project. Do leave a comment and tell me what lovely textile things you have enjoyed or you find yourself saying from time to time or that you think might have a connection to the textile world and maybe you go off and try and find out and let us know what you discover. Leave it in the comments and we will pick a winner from those comments next time and you'll get a surprise, who knows what kind of uh, prize. And just thanks very much for watching. Do sign up for our newsletter at um, thewoollythistle.com. That's how we like to keep in touch with you throughout the week. And um, keep in touch through Instagram, Facebook, and Ravelry. So I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting, wear your mask still, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.